Howdy everyone, Runt9 here, and welcome back to Runt9 Plays the Dungeon Beneath. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen Dungeon Beneath on the channel, and we're jumping back in for a couple of major reasons. Number one, a big update just dropped, version 1.1, the Illifar update, added a new end boss, bunch of new items, artifacts, and characters, and so I wanted to check that out anyways. And a little extra bonus, Puzzlebox Games, the developer of the game, reached out to me, I uh, wanted to see if I wanted to stream it and threw a couple Steam codes my way to give away to chat. So I, I always uh, I, I always love that type of stuff. And I, I it was the perfect storm of like, I knew that I needed to just do a stream to check the game out. So um, one of the cool things that has been added is there is a refresh button when you start a new game. So you can kind of, you know, try to find something that you really want to play with. Um, we're we're going to do that a little bit because I want to try to find uh, a new artifact to play around with. So let's just kind of see what we get. We got Jack's Fiddle. Whenever you visit a campfire, gain two gold. It seems pretty cool. Haunted by Illifar, King of Demons. So you can actually see the end boss on the uh, the start as well. And we will make sure that if we make it to the end boss that it will be Illifar. Um, this is a, an existing artifact. I do not think that I've seen Eloa yet. Whenever an ally loses shield, give them plus three power. Dang, that's a uh, one radio voice you have there. I, I appreciate that. You know, I I've been doing this for about uh, about a year now, and I, I feel like I've definitely gotten better over the past year for sure. But still, not necessarily exactly where I want to be. Why do you always lean on your right shoulder when you start your intros? So it's actually my left shoulder. Um, I actually have the camera mirrored specifically so when I raise my left hand, it's on the left side of the frame, and vice versa because I do a lot of pointing and talking with my hands. Um. And I don't know, it, it's just become kind of like a, a habit. So yeah, I, I think that this is really cool. Give an ally in this lane plus one power and exhaustible. Uh, that seems pretty neat, and I think I've seen this uh, this one before. Enemies take plus one damage from poison. So Aloha would be a fun one to, to try out. Summoned allies can't be exhausted. That's a great one for a summoner build. Got uh, items cost one less gold. Battle start, summon Jack. And haunted by Illifar. Honestly, this sounds like fun. Uh, you know, cheaper items gives us a chance to kind of stack up items a little bit more, give some more refreshes to try to dig for more items. And I'm pretty sure I haven't seen Mariana and Jack before. It may have already been in the game, but it's new to me at least. So we're going to take Mariana and Jack and get started here. It's a 2-6, so not super powerful early on. And we started with an, an archer. It did turn music on. We'll adjust that as necessary. So, uh, first battle <clears throat> is going to be... Oh, baby! Yo, As Embers Rise, thank you so much for the Tier 1 subscription. Much appreciated. Glad you're here. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream, and make sure you follow as well so you can uh, keep up with those updates. But very much appreciated. Um, I think this is the highest subscriber count we've had in... Um, Probably about five or six months at this point. Uh, March has been a fantastic month, man. It's been great stuff. <clears throat> also, I'm pretty sure we never actually listened to the music on stream, and I'm glad that we started doing this, because this is absolutely a bop. So this guy we've seen before does some random stuff. All right, so you summon a bird. You just, you just summon a little old bird. Um, I feel like the music's probably a little loud. Um, it, it sounds good to me, but I'll drop it down to 15% just to make sure that uh, I'm still talking over it. <clears throat> Dovemancer was a great unit. I, The one run that we did on stream where we got all the way to the final boss with that summoner build was pretty fantastic. Birds aren't real, though. Isn't that a, a fun meme subreddit? So I'm honestly just going to keep it like this. In fact... Um, yeah, we, we can get some damage in on the rat, and then these two will uh, kill this rat, which will break open the top lane. And so if you haven't seen the dungeon beneath before, it's, uh, it's a roguelike auto-battler, where it's turn-based in the sense that you have a turn where you can arrange your units, and there is an initiative order based on that unit's speed, which if you hover over a unit, you can see their speed on the right side of their, you know, card essentially there. And so you've got three lanes... And each unit can only attack units directly in front of them in their lane, with the caveat that if a lane is open, you can attack the backline enemy hero. This is our hero, and we 
lose the run if our hero takes lethal damage. So in this case, if they take six damage, we lose the run. And our goal is to uh, go through each room, kill the enemy hero, and not die. And we get items, we get XP where we can level our units up and they get stronger and their abilities get powered up. And we also can get new units at campfires. And at one point, we will have a maximum of four non-hero units out there. This game made me want to play Into the Breach again, so I did. I never played Into the Breach, I don't think. I don't think I played FTL either, which is probably pretty sad. So the units we started with, uh, and we'll, we'll show that here in a second. I'm pretty sure we're going to go to a campfire. So we uh, beat a unit, we get three gold. Um, I feel like the, the sound effects as well are kind of loud. Or maybe I just have my sound up kind of loud right now. <clears throat> so we're going to go to a campfire. This allows me to... Uh, uh, allows us to grab new units. So we started with these followers. They're basic one attack, three uh, HP units. Um, if your basic units die, they will be revived at the end of the battle. Uh, but they also do not uh, have the ability to gain XP if they died. Did you know that Demon Crawl is getting an auto battler as well? I think you mentioned that uh, the other day when we were playing Demon Crawl on stream, and I honestly completely forgot, but I am absolutely going to play the crap out of it for sure. Um, and then so we started with a hunter. So you start with a random unit um, uh, along with your hero. Yo, Mothman PL, thank you so much for the follow. Much appreciated. Glad you're here, and hopefully you're enjoying the stream. Thank you so much. So the Hunter is a 1-4, 3 speed, has the ability follow up, deal 1 damage to the lowest HP enemy. So basically after they attack, they will do an additional 1 damage to the lowest HP enemy. Which can be really useful for finishing off some weak stuff, getting them out of the way, getting blockers out of the way. So you can hit the enemy hero a little easier. We got 3 units here. I believe all of these were already in the game. I'm going to cheat just a little bit and uh, pop open the encyclopedia. So it should be... Yeah, there are two units that are available in level one that we have not seen yet. So it's probably worth refreshing a little bit. We've got the gold for it. Elf Mage is uh, when an, an enemy dies, deal damage to a random character. Although, this is the Druid, and filling our board with some summoned units could potentially open up some synergies. So I'm going to go ahead and take the summoner here, and then we're not going to refresh or take anything else. We'll just save that money for, uh, for some items in the future. <clears throat> restorative ooze when an ally dies restore one hp so this guy can be a little bit of a problem um you uh you have to deal with the adds but at the same time also deal with the fact that it will keep healing and it does two damage a pop which can be problematic at times so i think what i want to do is honestly just go ahead and throw jack up here uh because jack does get to attack first so we're going to put down four damage there is not going to be a way for us to put down five, so that's going to be the most we can do. This one's going to die, heal it for uh, for one, so we're going to be okay. How does Jack scale? Because otherwise he's dead wood. I, I think the whole point is to scale it with artifacts that do bonus, um, bonus summon stuff. I did forget about the fact that uh, when these die, they summon two slimes each. And so we ended up killing the slimes instead of uh, hitting the restorative ooze here. So we've got these two zero one dubs, which uh, function basically just as uh, chump blockers. Druid scales much better. I agree. Um, I, I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, so we'll just kind of have to see. So now we've got all the allies done, and having one stop, one spot being blocked by Jack is not optional. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Yeah, I, I am interested to see how it works long term. Because as it is right now, I would I would tend to agree that it doesn't seem particularly promising. So we're going to move kind of quickly early game because uh, the first floor is fairly easy. Uh, the second floor and the third floor each have a huge difficulty spike right after you beat the uh, the bosses of each floor. So after you beat normal enemies, you get these potions of XP. You gain one XP on a unit. And once a unit reaches 3 XP, it levels up. We're going to put that on the Druid uh, because and you can always check the encyclopedia for this. You click on the Druid, you can see what level 1, level 2, and level 3 look like. So it starts as a 1-3, summons two doves, becomes a 2-5, summons two ravens, which are 1-1s, one I believe. The doves are 0-1s. And then becomes a 2-6 that summons two wolves, which are like 2-5s or something like that. I know they do more damage. 
The wolves are quite good. So we're going to go for a little bit of a summoner build here. So it's going to give us an item. We get a plus one attack on a mage. I mean, sure, we can put that on our druid. It's nothing too crazy. Just a simple reward room. <clears throat> Aziel, uh, we've seen this guy before. Bonus objective, take no hero damage. So he gets some bonus attack for each skeleton, and these bone piles, when you destroy them, transform into a skeleton. <clears throat> Actually going to fire up a run myself? It sounds good to me. It is quite a good game. So I think what I want to do is move a follower over here, because now Druid can pop this barrel. We'll get a kill there, and I believe that the Hunter will hit that. Let's look at the attack order. Yeah, Hunter is going to hit that and then hope that that's going to count as the lowest HP enemy and kill it with its follow-up. We're going to kill both of these bone piles, which are uh, going... This bone pile is going to get to transform into a skeleton. Unfortunately, the only way that we could prevent that is by doing this, which maybe is the right answer. Because we want to clear out all the bone piles and just uh, not let the enemy hero get uh, get some big attack damage on us. It does look good. Never gotten into roguelikes, but this looks sick. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely a fantastic game. Um, I have enjoyed playing it quite a lot. Um, like I said, I stopped playing it purely because I had so many other games pop up that I wanted to play at the same time. But I absolutely expect this game will end up in my top 10 of 2021. I, I think it has that much promise. And already, when you look at the, the massive 1.1 update... It shows you how committed the developers are to keeping the game new and fresh with uh, with new cool stuff. We're just going to focus on trying to get this guy upgraded. Have we seen a gargoyle room before? I'm pretty sure this is a new icon. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on that. What what does this do? Illifar offers you a deal. Oh, is this a deal with the devil? Bathin offers optional bargains that increase the difficulty of the next battle in return for gold. Oh, it's a deal with the devil, baby. Gain two gold, next battle, enemies have plus three speed. Gain three gold, next battle, an extra enemy is spawned. Gain three gold, next battle, the enemy hero has plus three health. I just got a hero that has plus one party limit. Yo, that is absolutely a dope ability. Honestly, I think we could probably handle an extra enemy. With our summons, we've got the ability to, to tank some decent damage. I, I love deal with the devil mechanics. You guys know I love uh, high risk, high reward stuff. So we've seen this guy before. Uh, after his attack, he boosts other beasts. So yeah, it just summoned another rat. That's fine. Or no, it summoned a skeleton. Okay. They even have correct demon names in those deals. Yes, which is uh, which is very cool. So what we got to worry about, um, there's a lot of rats we got to get through. I think it's going to be best to try to get through this middle pile. And also, uh, so you can have random room effects like this, where characters can't move when placed on webs. So like if we moved Jack to this web, then they would be unable to move. Or actually, they may already be unable to move. So right now... You two are going to kill this rat. You're going to get a hit in on the skeleton, but not kill it. So I think we actually want to do it this way. No, because unfortunately that still accomplishes the same thing. Because you're going to do one and then two. So basically, what we want to hope for... I, I don't see a, a way to make this work the way that I want to, so I'm just going to send it as is. Because definitely, like, early on, analysis paralysis is a big deal. There's a million different ways that you can arrange your units, and sometimes you just gotta send it. The second round, usually it's a lot easier to see where you want to go. And in this case, I think we actually have a solid setup here. This rat's gonna kill this dove. Uh, skeleton is going to kill this dove. We're gonna... Actually, no, we're gonna kill the skeleton first. So the, uh, the enemy hero is just killing this dove. We're going to kill this barrel, and so we're going to have all lanes open easy enough. We can just move forward from there. <clears throat> Good damage. Uh, we took a little bit here, but not concerned about that. We all So basically, the two heroes attack very last. 
So once you get to that point, you can just simply click attack knowing that you've got the win. Got a new unit, time to try it. Let me know how it goes. I'm interested to hear what all uh, what all the new units do. So we're going to get a level up on our druid, and so now we're going to be getting some ravens instead of some uh, some doves. And also get plus one attack, so now uh, our druid is a 3-5. So our druid is not only the highest damage unit, but also does some summoning. <clears throat> it's like, perfect. Yo, hit me with that ability. I want to know what it's all about. Plus two HP on our archer. I actually love this because now this is a perfectly valid formation. We can actually let our archer tank for our hero. Now, uh, what we did do by skipping the campfire to go to the gargoyle is we're still rocking uh, two followers right now. He gives power to hero when healed and I started with the healer. I think that was already in the game. Maybe not. Also, my hero does uh, also give plus one power to humans at end of turn. That sounds like a great synergy. Now, I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted from the game, and we kind of talked about it when we first played it, is just more stuff, more items, more units, because the synergies are what make it fun for me. Trying to find the right combination of your hero and your artifacts and your items and your units to just do something completely insane. When any character dies, gain plus one attack. So uh, th this guy can be quite problematic. Starts as a 0-6, but gets um, gets pretty big pretty quick. Uh, especially considering that there are six things that we can kill. Plus, it's going to kill our doves as well. At the, fount uh, at the end of each round, restore one health to a damaged character. And this is random, so it could be the enemy hero. It could be like a dove or a raven or whatever. Um, yeah, also, so the music in this game is quite good. And I feel bad that we never uh, had it on before. I am going to move our druid over here. I would like to kill this treasure chest because I believe it will give us two bonus gold at the end. And we can uh, we can send it from here. Royal Guard wasn't in the game, if I remember correctly. I'd have to double check. It might have been. So yeah, you can see that the, uh, the enemy hero is already up to a 5-6. Fortunately, we've got a, a raven that can tank for us here. But I... Um, oh, but you're not inexhaustible. So if you move units after the first round, they become exhausted, meaning they cannot do anything that turn. I guess this is going to be fine. I, I would say it would be ideal to switch the druid over and get some more damage down, but ultimately you're just going to kill the raven, which is actually perfectly fine. Because now, we will be able to attack, get that last 2 HP gone, and be good to go. Easy enough. So we are on 11 of 13, so we should have... Uh, yeah, it's going to give us a choice here. We're going to want a campfire for sure. Although item rooms are very important, and we have a truckload of gold, I want to go ahead and get our team filled out so that we can... Um, because I, I think the items become more important once you have your team filled out because then you can better understand the synergies that you're going to get. Armor Smith is good. Give some bonus armor. What campfires do again? Campfires give you the chance to add new characters to your party. Uh, the party limit is four. So we have to get rid of these basic followers. Much like in a, a roguelike deck builder where you can remove your early starting cards. You can sell these for one gold a piece and replace them with characters that have actual abilities. Royal Guard, Channeler, and Javelinier are the new ones in the update. And it's probably one per floor, I would venture to guess. Give a random allied mage plus one power. So the Enchanter is kind of weak. If I remember correctly, it does bounce up to plus two power. Um, no, no, not Harrispex. It's uh, Enchanter. Level three, give all allied mages plus one power. Becomes a 210. So... It does get fairly tanky. Uh, let's let's go ahead and start down that path, and then give me a refresh. We got uh, when an ally dies, gain plus two power. We really don't want to count on that. And then there we go. There's allied summoned units have plus one attack. I mean, Fey Adept is pretty much exactly what you want. Now, the problem here is as it sits right now, we have one frontline unit and three backline units, and that can be not the greatest idea in the world. So we'll poke around a little bit more. There's the Royal Guard. 
When this hero gains health, your hero gains plus one power. Your hero gains plus one power. Oh. Okay, I misread what you were saying, Adrian. That's, uh, that's quite nice. And then there's the Javelinier. Attacks after gaining armor. There's some fun synergies you can do with that for sure. Um... Unfortunately, we don't have the synergies to make either of these work. So essentially, I, I would like to try to get Hunter out of here and try to find another synergy for this group. We've got Mage of the Sun, gains double the amount of power. Poisonous, inexhaustible. Honestly, I, I could see Rogue working just because we already have another Poisonous unit with the Fey Adept. Tanner is all right, gives us some bonus gold, but things are cheaper, so bonus gold doesn't help us as much as it might help other characters. Sword one health for each allied lizard folk. Find protector, give an allied mage shield. Um, this guy basically exists to take damage and uh, and just try to keep the back line alive, which is actually exactly what we want. How uh, how does he scale? Divine protector. Give all allied mages shield at level 2. Give all allies shield a 112. You know what? That's our tank. Um, hold on. We have to remove the hunter first. Let's put that on the ground. Bring the divine protector in. And unfortunately, we have to sell that equipment. So now we've got a, a pretty neat squad here. Divine protector can... Uh, is, is actually probably the one we want to level up next because giving all allies mages shield can help keep our very squishy fey adept alive. So dungeon boss here, reanimated colossus, attacks twice. Uh, this, this guy can do some damage. I have lost to the reanimated colossus before. And then um, if you don't kill these guys, they summon bone piles which turn into skeletons and you do have to worry about that for sure. Are you guys hearing this music? Why did we turn the music? What? I'm glad that we've gotten back on uh, leaving game music on. This song is just absolutely wonderful. So probably what we'll do is, um, well, no, we, we, we're probably only like 20 minutes into the YouTube episode, so um, we, we can keep it going probably through the second floor. So let's uh, scooch the dove up, move the druid over. Maybe even do that. Let the dove take this hit. If we do it like this, you'll be poisoned, so you'll die, and then the Divine Protector can just do its job and tank damage. So this way we kill both of the Twin Mancers, and we kill them both before they get to take their turn. That seems good. That way we don't have to worry about uh, Bone Piles popping up. Still got to do the Bone Pile because poison, hap poison happened at the end of round, but that's totally okay because now we have Ravens replacing the Dove that we lost. Um, so you will die. That will also kill the Raven. But I am okay with this because as it is right now, Enchanter gave Fey Adept plus one power. So I don't think we need to maneuver anything around. We're going to kill the Bone Pile. We're going to do a bunch of damage to the boss. I don't think we quite have 13 damage this round. Ooh, rip Adrian. Three health on a hero is not much. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, Critter, welcome to the stream. Appreciate you being here. Love seeing you come in with that Poggers. Make sure you stick around. We're, uh, we're going to be doing the first giveaway before too terribly long. We may stop like halfway through the second floor and just split this run into two videos. So we get some bonus gold. We could heal our hero, which we don't need to because we've taken no damage. We got an artifact choice here. First time an ally takes damage, give him a shield. Whenever you visit campfire, gain two gold. Whenever an ally gains armor, they gain an extra armor. Honestly, we've got some shield stuff going on. Go ahead and give me more shield. Just checking in. I appreciate it. And then... Um, we could give the 2 XP here to the Druid, get our Wolf, go ahead and get that, or get our Wolves, go ahead and get that level up, and then we'll uh, definitely get the Divine Protector leveled up next. The Druid is now a 2-6, summons a couple of Wolves, and I, I feel pretty good about that. So we're going to bump up to the second floor here. And again, like I mentioned, there is a huge difficulty spike at the start of the second and third floors. 
We get a choice of some potions here, some XP, transform a fighter. Yo, Luffy, welcome, brother. So max level of the character is three. Yes, uh, all character max level is three. Um, and it's three XP a piece, so you need nine XP to take a character all the way up to max level. So we can transform a fighter into a basic copy of a random party member. Their character loses all their equipment, consumable. I actually don't think we want that. I, we, we like the two fighters we have right now. Allows fighters to use equipment from any class. Definitely going to throw that on the Enchanter, because the Enchanter does get a little bit of damage, and then start getting some XP down here. You can usually level up all your party members to three. Yes. Um, the game is balanced in such a way where you should be able to get all four characters up to level three to the final boss with the caveat that deaths can kind of throw that through a loop and the times where you're most likely to have characters die is on the third floor where you only have one or two characters left to, to get to level three poisonous round in change lane this guy is uh, pretty rough remember what i said about that difficulty spike you got deteriorating simulate which when they die summon a headless simulate which are these two fours so it doesn't play around so as it is right now, um, and if a unit dies, it can't receive XP that fight. Yep, exactly. Which is actually going to make the Divine Protector kind of hard to level up because we want it to die. <clears throat> so as it is right now, we will kill the Simulae. And then it will spawn a Headless... Which will then kill Jack, which would mean that we're leaving our hero open to take one damage plus poison. And poison does uh, one damage every single round. So you really don't want your hero to get poisoned. So I think the right answer here is probably to move the dove up, put our druid here, and just accept the fact that um, these lines are going to get beat up a bit. Just try to throw a bunch of damage down the center lane because. The, uh, the hero will move. We'll go ahead and see the attack here. The hero is going to move into a random lane. But if we can clear out this middle lane, then we can still hit it in the back row because the lane will be open. And now we've got our two four wolves. Uh, so, that it, yeah, the, the wolves are usually one four. We've got the buff from our Fey Adept that's buffing them to two four. So... We're not going to be able to get through this, because that's going to be two, that's going to be three, and kill two kills there. Yeah, we will be able to chuck through the line. Unfortunately, I believe the Enchanter is going to die here. Actually, it does have a shield, so it's going to block that two damage, take the one from the Cobra. They didn't look like that before. I honestly don't remember what they looked like. Maybe they did look like this before. Maybe they didn't, I mean. So as it is right now, if we don't move Enchanter, Enchanter is going to die. But I think the Enchanter dies regardless of where we put it. If we do this, we can kill the Simulate. If we do this, we can clear out the middle line. I think that's probably where we want to be. Don't hurt puppies. I, I generally try to leave the wolves alive. So now we should get an easy kill here. We're going to attack enough times through two empty lanes to kill the cobra. We can move on to the next floor. Manage to squeak through with no deaths, which is what you want to see. Because again, that is very important for making sure that you can level up who you want to level up. And it, that is part of the strategy as well. Is like If you're trying to focus on leveling up one particular character... Try not to let them die. You know, switch out some other characters. Use your exhaustions to your advantage instead of your detriment to, uh, to get the XP where you want it. Trigger all allied doom effects. That's actually incredible. I don't know that I've seen Chandler before. Don't forget you can reset once per battle. That's resin. I don't use that. That's saves coming. If I, if I screw up, I will, I will eat my screw up and just deal with it. Deal double damage to poisoned characters. So Vin and Witch is actually a really good addition with a poisonous unit. Unfortunately, I think that the Enchanter is probably better. So if they die, it's not a permadeath. You just lose out on XP. Yes, so these units do not permadie. They just can't get XP that battle. 
the only way that your run is over is if the um, the hero himself loses itself. You see, since I played Into the Breach, that is an essential mechanic. That I, I can understand that. Into the Breach is a pretty difficult game from what I've heard. Honestly, I'm going to reroll. Just kind of dig around, see if there is somebody that would be really nice to have. Squire is a big buff unit. Certainly interesting. Arguably just better than Enchanter, but once Enchanter gets leveled up, it does give power to everyone. Cultist is alright. Uh, Channeler we've seen. Mage of the Sun we've seen. Wrath Conduit targets the lowest health enemy in any lane. Counter attack. Does it only attack on counter? I think it may only attack on counter. Either way, that's a pretty interesting unit. And then the Flame Adept is, uh, is quite nice. It actually does some AoE damage. Ranger, Channeler, Mage of the Sun. So I re realized we wasted some money here, but uh, just wanted to poke around, see if we had some units that would be good to pick up. But for now, happy to leave it as it is. Orb Queen gets plus one attack for each ally. And as I'm sure you can imagine, these eyes spawn these eyes when they die. So figuring out how we want to get through here. I, I like throwing Jack out into the front in this row. So essentially what it's going to look like, attack order. Jack kills that eye. Druid hits this eye. Hero hits this eye. Kills it. We summon three wandering orbs. We've got uh, five damage coming out. Um, it's not going to stay five damage though. We're going to kill one, two, three, but gain three. So I think it's still going to be at five. But assuming that we kill both of these and no other eyes are in the row, then all that damage should just go on to Jack. So I'm okay with this current setup. I honestly did forget that the eyes have high speed and they attack random enemies. So by the, the skin of their teeth, the druid was able to escape with 1 HP. And now we should be able to burn them down from here. It's a little bit spooky. We don't want the druid to die, but at the moment, the druid is our only level 3, so if it dies, that's okay. I may have missed it, but is there a story, or is it just like a dungeon crawler till you die? There might be a story. Um, so, uh, to people new to the stream, I tend to not focus on story too much, especially in games that are heavy on mechanics and light on story. I think there is a little bit of lore, but for the most part, um, as a roguelike, you basically just start a run and go, and it just kind of, you just keep doing a loop of run after run after run. There's not really a story. Some have more stories than others. This one, it's definitely light on the, the lore and story for sure. So honestly, I think you just click attack here. We don't really need to shift our units around for this battle. We, we definitely have a solid setup right now. There we go. The, the poison got the kill, so we're moving forward. As it is right now, I would definitely say this is a run capable of making it to the final boss. So this is the other new room type that we have not seen yet. Hades has great story, for example. Great for roguelike, absolutely. Uh, and also just rooted deeply, deeply in Greek mythology. Like, dripping with lore all around Greek mythology. Give all allied mages shield. So we've got the Divine Protector leveled up. And basically, like, at this point, if the Divine Protector dies, that's fine. Because it's going to protect both of these mages for a turn. So we want to see what, uh, what this room is all about. <clears throat> Hello, friend. Have you brought me an item? Androma, uh, Andromalius will transform one piece of equipment, right-click to remove equipment, and then place the equipment in the void. I, I will absolutely throw an item in here and get something random out. Searing sign. Plus three attack, minus three health. Let's do it! <laughs> I got an achievement for that. The wand. Acquire a searing sign. That's... I love that. Absolutely love that. I will use that room almost every time I see it. That said, we do still only have a single item across all of our uh, characters. Paralyzing attack, uh, which I believe paralyzing just means that uh, it's a stun. They, uh, they skip their turn. Paralyzing attack. The target is paralyzed and cannot move or attack until the end of their next turn. Yeah. 
So this is a situation where we would strongly prefer that this hits Jack, but I don't think there's going to be a way to put down enough damage. Because... Oh no, it's already headless. For some reason I thought it was a deteriorating. So actually we'll be fine. Because Jack kills the urn, Druid kills the headless, and then the hero just kills Jack. Paralyzed doesn't matter. So that's actually exactly what we want. I keep trying with this three health hero. I'm sure you'll make it work eventually. So this is basically the halfway point of the second floor. So I think after this room, we'll go ahead and take a short break to uh, to do our first giveaway. So make sure you stick around if you want a chance at getting a copy of the dungeon beneath. All right, so you are going to just run right into his shield and at the moment, Enchanter is dying. Enchanter has to be in the front. So even though this lowers our damage output, I'm going to do this. Uh, I am I am actually dumb. Because now uh, the Enchanter is going to die either way now. Although I guess we are going to kill the Simulae. No, we won't because they're, uh, they're exhausted. That, that was probably the most pointless move I could have possibly done. So we, hold on, you are a gray wolf now? Pardon me? No, no, Enchanter, I want your corpse here. That's basically what I did. I, I said, you know what, if you're going to die, you're going to die over here, not over there. Because, you know, that totally makes a difference. We took no hero damage, so we got the bonus gold from this. Gold, 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 and XP onto... Probably want to get the Enchanter. Oh, well, they, they died, unfortunately. Um, I forget how uh, Fae Adept levels up. Fae Adept also only has 2 HP. Okay, you know what? Fae Adept does give plus 3 attack. I forgot about that. Um, gargoyle or Campfire? I'm definitely going to go for... Uh, what does the Gargoyle do again? It's deal with the Devil. I would prefer an item room. So actually, this, uh, like I said, this is where we're going to take a short break. For those of you watching out on YouTube, uh, we will be continuing this run tomorrow. Uh, so keep an eye out for that video and make sure you subscribe to see more uh, videos like this in the future. And come check us out live over on twitch.tv slash plays That's where we're doing this right now. And for those of you watching live, stick around for a giveaway for our first Steam key for the dungeon beneath. But until next time, I'm Rut9, and I'll see you later.